All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start this lesson or video by giving a praise, design, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Racha Kwedash, the bondage of the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone, and Shalom, first and foremost, to the 144,000, as well as the rest of the elect of the nation of Israel. This is the Ratzah from the Great Millstone, J. Miscellaneous Camp, once again. All right, and um, as always, I just want to get into a couple of uh, precepts and scriptures. Um, that is centered around prophecy, of course. All right. And um, this this particular verse, you know, just came to mind through the spirit in Daniel's the fifth chapter. Uh, the point being in the 25th verse dealing with um, ancient Babylon. All right. We know that, uh, um, you know, ancient Babylon was ruled by a man by the name of um, Nebuchadnezzar. But then later on, his uh, son took over. Uh, Bel Shazar, as you see there, and um, yeah, and, and that you know that basically was the uh, end of the of the Babylonian um, rulership or the kingdom. All right, and we know according to the prophecy, and as well as uh, according to history, that the um, Medo Persian Empire came up next. But the point I wanted to get is uh, what was told to. Bel Shazar, and um, you know essentially how that applies to the modern day Babylon, all right? Which essentially um, is America, all right? All kingdoms had their time; they had their time to rule. They, you know, had their purpose, and then they, and then they, you know, and then they was brought down. So the so-called white man, who's Esau, all right, which were currently in Esau's rulership. This place, this place is is no different. Than the kingdoms of, of of the uh past. All right, so I was going to read a couple of scriptures here. I'm gonna start here, Daniel's the, the, the uh, fifth chapter. And um, you know what? I'll just uh, I'll start up at 22 and and you know try to read into it. Um, yeah, I start at verse 22. <coughs> Excuse me. This is uh, Daniel's five and 22. It says, "And thou his son." O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. But thou, uh, excuse me, but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou has praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. In the Most High, in whose hand thy breath is, and whose all excuse me, whose are all thy ways, that has that has thou not glorified? Right, right. that sound sound like Esau too. That's what Esau do. He prays and worships these idols. He doesn't give the the, the, the credence or the credit to how about Shemiah was shy. All right, he's proud. All right, it says uh, verse twenty four. It says then was. The other, excuse me, then was part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And it says, uh, verse 25, and this is the writing that was written. Many, many tickle you farsen. All right? And it says, this is the interpretation of the, of the thing. Many, the God or the Most High, have numbered thy kingdom and finished it. See that? And that's the title of the video. The Most High has numbered thy kingdom and finished it, and that's essentially what the Lord has done with America. All right, which is which, is, which again is to reiterate is the new modern day Babylon. All right, the virgin daughter of Babylon. The Most High has numbered this place, and He's completely finished it, and He's good. All right, and He's and He's gonna finish it. All right, and if, to, to finish this place off is going to be via what the thermonuclear missiles in World War Three. All right, and it goes on and says, uh, Tekel, thou art weighed in a balance and art found wanting. Right? Wanting means to be uh, uh, basically um, lacking, or weak. All right? And verse 28 says, uh, verse 28 says, Perez, uh, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Yeah, yeah, and this place is divided too. All right, scripture says, "If Satan be divided against Satan, 
how can his kingdom stand? This place is, is very divided, man. Esau's system, the beast system, is all divided, broken up. All right? They're not on one accord. And what? It's going to cause their kingdom to be given, not 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 to the, to the, to the Medes and the Persians, but to the Israelites, man. All right? The Israelites will consist of your so-called blacks, Hispanics, Negroes, Native American, and Seminole Indians of the, of, of the 12 tribes. All right? Like brothers say, we got next. As a matter of fact, um... It's just a right hand Daniel. Uh where's that at? Is that Daniel 7? Let's jump over real quick. Right, there you go. This is Daniel chapter 7. And um uh, verse 18. Alright, spare my habit to it. I might do another video on Daniel 7 chapter. Since we're uh, you know, brothers in the in the in the spirit of doing you know, of um, going back over the basic breakdowns. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I might I might do that for my, my, my next video. But this is Daniel 7 and 18. It says, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. All right. Which we know the saints of the Most High is another name for the Israelites. And it says shall take the kingdom. Now, when you read this Daniel 7 chapter, it goes through the. Those, those four mighty empires, all right, we, we you know, we read about the, um, the the Medes and the Persians that were going to take over the um, Babylonian Empire, and then later, you know, came the Greeks and then the Romans, and which was, we're still in, in the time of the fourth beast, which is Rome, but just in the latter part of it. But then when you read up, it reads about the, the uh, downfall of Rome or that, that fourth beast being brought down. And then right after that, in verse 18, it says, the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. So the, the saints of the Most High, being Israelites, are the next people to possess the world or possess a uh, rulership of the earth. All right. And it all starts with going back to Daniel 5, <laughs> the Most High essentially finishing this place, man. All right. Babylon the Great, which is America, the modern day Egypt. All right, the beast system, all of this is is all is all numbered, man. And it's only a matter of time. All right. Now let's go from there to uh matter of fact, let's jump back. Let's stay in Daniels. I think it's Daniels two and twenty one. If I'm not mistaken. Um not two and twenty one. Uh let's see. Um, if I can't find it, we'll just move on to, uh, Psalms. Uh, deep darkness. Let's see if we can't find it. We'll just, we'll just move on to, uh, Huh. You know what? Yeah, we could uh read we could read forty four. It's not really what I wanted, but you know that's 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 the spirit anyway. All right, Daniel two and forty four. It says in the days of these kings shall the most high or power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. See that? And again, Daniel's second chapter and Daniel's the seventh chapter are very similar it's essentially talking about the same thing it just uses different um different dreams all right and when one dream it was it was, a, it was like a statue it had a gold the, the breastplate of silver and all that which just identifies the various king the the, the the four different kingdoms and then the other dream it mentions the four beasts so this is after all right the feet of the statue in Daniel two are destroyed by what you know basically what he saw in dream was it was a, it was a stone or a stone that was carved out of the mountain and it came and it hit the hit the feet of the statue and the statue fell who is that stone the stone is talking about our lord yahweh shai that's going to return and take down this current kingdom 
but it says verse um verse 44 excuse me it says in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall excuse me but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever right and what kingdom is that it's the kingdom of heaven all right, the kingdom of heaven, the scriptures prophesied about where Israel is going to rule. Like, 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 like the scriptures prophesied in Revelation 5. It says, Thou shalt be uh, kings and priests, and you shall rule on the earth. Roughly paraphrasing. That's what it was referring to. It's not going to be left to no other people. All right? No other people, man. That's why the um, disciples, when they asked the Lord to, prior to him going back to the heavens, Acts the first chapter, they asked the Lord, would thou at this time restore the kingdom unto Israel? Not, not to everybody, not to the whole world, the white man. And no, the kingdom is, is going to be left to no other people but the Israelites. And it's going to consume and everybody else is going to be broken down. All right. Um, yeah, and I, I, would, I would just read verse 45. Since I, I mentioned it, verse 45, for as much as thou sawest, that the stone was cut out of the mountain with our hands and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay and the silver and the gold and the great power hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof is sure, right? So that stone is talking about your house shy, right? The stone is going to come and break this place down. All right, so let's go from there to, uh, I think it was Psalm 75. Just more scriptures on the Lord bringing down kingdoms and setting up um, other kingdoms in their place. All right. And then we'll get Sirach 10, I believe, and then we'll uh, go ahead and end the video. Psalm 75 and 6. All right. Psalm 75 verse 6 says, for, for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But the most high is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. See that? So the, so the heavenly father ultimately has to say so who has, you know, power over the earth. So the Lord puts down one and sets up another. Just like we read in Daniel 5. The Lord numbered Babylon. He, he numbered his kingdom and finished it. He put them down and set up the Middle Persian empires in a in a place during that time. You fast forward today, all right. The Heavenly Father has numbered Esau in America and the beast. All right, he's numbered it and finished it. And he's going what? He's going to put them down and set up the nation of Israel, as we just read in those other scriptures in the Book of Daniel. All right. And it's really just that simple, man. It's only a matter of time. All right, let's go to Surat 10. All right, the whole, the whole, you know, you read the first portion of the chapter is real good, but for, the, for time's sake, to, you know, to keep the video short, let's go down to 10 and, um, 10 and uh, verse 8. All right, Surat, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. This is because of unrighteous dealings. It's essentially what Esau has been doing ever since he stepped his monkey ass into power. All right. He's been dealing unrighteously, man. It says injuries and riches got by deceit. See that? The kingdom is translated from one people to another. See that? So it's like we read it again, going back to Daniel. When um, he was told to uh, uh, Belshazzar what he was doing. The Lord told him, look, because you do do these things, nigga, I'm taking a kingdom from you. You ain't going to, you're not going to, people are not going to rule no more. It was the same thing with Esau. All right. Unrighteous dealings, injurious practices, lying to get riches, stealing, robbing. All right. The kingdom is going to be, trans translated means to be changed, to be changed over. You're going to be, the kingdom is going to be, it's going to be changed over from your hands to the hands of the Israelites. All right, matter of fact, let's jump down. It's another verse. Um, yeah, verse 14. All right, so right 10, verse 14. What we'll, we'll, we'll end it off here. It says, The Lord have cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. See that? The Lord's about to cast down 
the throne of a proud prince, that print, that proud prince or the princes being Esau, starting with the top tier elite, right? The bankers, they're proud and they're in this position of rulership, but the Lord's about to cast them down and set up the meek in their stead. Who's the meek? The, the, uh, the Israelites starting with the elect. Then it goes on to say the Lord, verse 15, the Lord have plucked up the roots of the proud nations. And planted the lowly, all right? <clears throat> excuse me. And have planted the lowly in their place. See that? And who's the proud nation? Again, Edomites, Esau, the so called white man. And the lowly, again, is the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. And then it goes on to say, the Lord overthrew the countries of the heathen <clears throat> and destroyed them to the foundation thereof. That's what the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Shemi Al Shai, Heavenly Father through his son is about to do, man. He's about to overthrow these goddamn heathens. Starting with Esau and the rest of these mother effers, all right? And he's going to establish the Israelites, all right? And then it goes on, the whole chapter is just, is, is, just, is, is just bad, man. But that's the point, all right? The Lord's about to cast down these, these proud nations and set up the Israelites. Matter of fact, let's... Uh, Let's end on that. I forgot to get it. The old faithful second Ezra six and nine. <coughs> Excuse me. Second Ezra chapter six and verse nine. Again to the point. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. See that? Who's Esau once again? The biblical name for the so-called white man. All right. You read about Esau in the Bible. That's the that's the 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 basically the forefather. Of the white people you see walking around on earth today. And Jacob is the Israelites, which is not the people over there in the land, all right, as we call them the small hats. Those are a bunch, a bunch of God. Well, they're actually Edomites, all right. We are Jacob, we are the Israelites, Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, all right. So we're the, we're the world that's going to come after Esau's world, all right. This world's getting ready to end, all right, meaning his time, his rulership, okay. So yeah, man, you know, it's just, just, just another video, just, just a couple of scriptures, you know, just thinking out loud, we're just thinking about that scripture in Daniel 5, all right, about, and that's that's where the term, uh, you basically see the writing on the wall, people say, yeah, man, you know, I see the writing on the wall, meaning that I know, I, I basically know what's coming, you know, it's clear what's about to, what's about to occur, that's, that's where that, that phrase comes from, all right, with that writing, you know, he saw that. That was number that kingdom and finished it, man. Let's get ready to happen. All right. So with that, Lord willing, you was edified. Give him a praise and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rechak Wadash. And uh, Lord willingly to the next uh, video, I'm going to say Shalom.